Hi and happy Monday. Happy Monday everyone. What do we got going on today? Well, we are talking about seven of the best fish with great personalities. These are going to be wonderful fish. So if you are someone who likes to keep fish as pets and wants a little bit of interaction and interest in terms of their personalities, these are seven I think you're really going to love. What's the first one? Well, gee, a fish that would be like your buddy, that would be like your friend. Hmm. Bettas. Okay, so bettas. Why why did we choose bettas for your your one of your picks? Oh well, gosh, I don't know how much time do you have. They're like little buddies. Bob, the betta, is my coworker. He's almost better than you at being a coworker. Yeah, I'd say that's about true. They have great personalities. They they love to interact with you. It's fun feeding them. They look at you all the time. They wait for you to come by. They're fun to watch swim around the tank, and it I think it really helps that they're usually a single t fish in a tank. Just a lot of, you know, mano a mano. A lot of interaction between you and your buddy, the betta. They definitely know when you're in the room. Now, my first pick is, I think, one that is not going to come as a surprise. And actually, it's not a fish that we've had in the fish room, but I've seen a lot of them, I've interacted with a lot, and that is the flower horn. Now, I know some of you are thinking right away, that fish is not for me. For some people, the flower horn is definitely not for them. For others, they really enjoy them. But I do say that they have, I do say. I do say. I do say, I do say. that they have a great personality, and they do. They definitely know when you're in the room, they're gonna interact with you. They are like little water dogs, water pets. And it's usually a fish, like a betta, where you're often going to keep it by itself in a tank 75 gallons or greater, but it can be very rewarding if you like that sort of look. Mm -hmm. Number three. Ooh, my second favorite or equal favorite, the pea puffer, yay! Now, not only the pea puffer, but I think all puffers in general, sure. right? The pea puffer is just one that's the most manageable for a lot of people, but all puffers oh, have yeah. a lot of personality. They have a lot of personality, and half that personality is in their eyeballs. What's really Going interesting about the pea puffer, and by the way, we've done species profiles on a lot of these fish. We'll put those in the description below if you want more information on how to keep these fish. But yeah, the pea puffers, they have these eyes, and, and as a lot of puffers do, that kind of move individually, mm -hmm. and they can keep one eye on you, and one eye on their food, and you one eye it. on one of their tank mates. Mm -hmm. So they are very interesting. They always look like they have, they're in deep thought. They and do. that is one of the things about fish that really have a lot of personalities. When they look like they're thinking, mm -hmm makes you wonder what, what exactly do they want to do next and to watch them swim around the tank they have a very unique swimming it's like they float they float like a butterfly they do so all right next one the next one is a, now this is a fish we have kept for a very long time I've had them numerous times throughout my life and that is the Oscar again I'm looking at these larger fish that are they really just act like water pets and Oscars absolutely if you've ever kept them you know that they are goofy they can have an attitude problem oh, yeah. they can be overly dramatic so sometimes when our oscar gets mad he will lay on the bottom of the tank just lay down he does uh, especially sometimes after water changes he's like you know what i don't like what you did and he'll just lay and then he'll get up and be fine and sometimes you just come down and he'll be like everybody else is swimming around he's just kind of laying there like okay i don't feel like interacting and then he gets real perky and starts to swim around and everything and they Ready get super help. excited when it's time to eat they get super excited when you are standing in front of the tank often Mm -hmm. And so this is definitely a fish. Now you have to have a big tank, right? So the flower horns I already mentioned, 75 gallons and above. I think for an Oscar, at least 75 gallons. So I really prefer to have them in a six foot tank or larger, but very cool fish. Lots of different types too. Ooh. What do you got next? Well, I thought Jason, I wanted to say this one because I am very partial. It's one of my favorite fish in the fish room. That's right. Ruby, the Midas cichlid. They are like water dogs. They're little like little puppy dogs. They're so cute. I just I warn you, if you have them, you're going to want to hug them. Yeah, we actually had the... Well, it's an interesting story. We, we didn't mean mm -hmm. to get the Midas cichlids. I, at one point, I went to a, uh, a, like a fish swap sort of thing. It was a club meeting, and they did a little auction at the end. And I thought I was bidding on like 10... Uh, fire mouth cichlids and so Oops. I had a space for those and that's how the bag was labeled it was labeled fire mouth cichlids and I get them home and within a few weeks I realized these were not fire mouth cichlids because they were real tiny and sure enough it was like 10 Midas cichlids and we wound up keeping a few of them we had Roger and Ruby they actually bred and produced lots and lots of offspring and then unfortunately we lost Roger but we still have yeah. Ruby 
but they are wonderful fish with fantastic personalities, especially if you can get a pair that gets along. Uh, that's pretty interesting too. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just one of those fish where sometimes it's best just to keep them in a tank by themselves, 75 gallon or so, and maybe a little bit larger, and you will be rewarded if you can, uh, if you can manage the aggression. But again, I like to keep them on their own. Okay, it's my turn Your now, turn. Right? All right, so one of the picks that I have, and it's not a very common fish, and that is the Oreochromus. These are the tilapia. There are different species. We have Oreochromus neloticus. It's in our 125. He is a big, gentle giant. He really doesn't pick on anybody. He's the biggest fish that we have in our fish room. Absolutely outstanding color, and he just gets so excited when we walk into the room. And when it's time to eat, he's one of the few fish that... I formed a bond with like this where, and, and a lot of the fish that we've mentioned can potentially do this, but he loves to eat food that I just pretty much drop right in his mouth. He's got a gigantic mouth with these huge lips, and I will just drop food sticks and glass shrimp and all kinds of stuff, and he just gobbles it up, and he always looks very appreciative after I do that. So he's really cool because, again, he's one of those fish that gets super excited when you're in the room. He definitely knows when his human person is, is around the tank, so I love that fish. They get huge. I recommend if you were going to keep well, some of these Oreochromus, you'd probably need at least an eight foot tank that's 24 inches wide. What we've got going on with a 125, that is an undersized tank for this size fish. And that's something that we'll have to look at as we look at our fish room plans in the future. How big would you say he is right now? He's almost 18 inches because when he, he looks at us from the front of the glass, his back tail is pretty close to the back. So again, we need to figure out a situation where he can have a little bit larger tank to be sure. And that's why I say eight foot tank, at least two feet wide. Okay, last you, one. You need a monster tank. Yeah, monster tank. I think we do. Last one, Shelly's. Shell dwellers. Who doesn't love them? Everybody loves them. I love them. And side note, they're really great to take a picture of. Yeah, so the shell dwellers are awesome because, and we're not just talking about one. We've got the Maltese, we've got Gold Ocelatus, we've got Brevis, we've got Similis, we've got Caudal Punks, which really aren't shell dwellers, but we kind of they kind of act like them. We've had lots of different kinds in the past, and they are all really fun. And I think one of the coolest things about them is the way they interact with one another. They do recognize you when you come into the room, but now you've got like potentially dozens of them in a fish tank, all super happy Religious. and wagging their little tails. Yes. And they're they're excited to see their owner. But they also have that interesting dynamic amongst one another. Yeah, I kind of think of them like Smurfs, a bunch of little Smurf villages. Okay. They're so cute. And when their babies are so tiny. They're, they're Smurfs cute. with tiny little fangs. Because if you look really close, most of the shell dwellers have these little fangs. Really? They do. They do. Huh. And they can be very protective of their fry. And so often with the shell dwellers, it's best if you keep them in a tank of their own. A species only tank. But the cool thing is for a lot of them, you can keep them in a tank that's 20 gallons or above. Mm. So... There's some options there, unlike the larger fish that we mentioned. So those were seven fish with or groups of fish that have fantastic personalities that you could okay. try out. Make great buddies. Well, appreciate you being here, and we will see you in the next one. Have a good week.